But good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope all is well in your world. Uh, as we're starting a new week in this new uh, kind of normal that we've found ourselves in. And as we continue to move forward and as we see uh, different parts of the com country begin to open up, uh, I just pray wisdom and uh, and strength and favor so that uh, we can see things move forward in a positive light, all right? Um, so we're continuing our daily devotional and we're looking at Psalm 29 today. And it's kind of a unique psalm. It's a little different than, than some of the other ones that we've looked at. It's a psalm of David. Uh, we don't know exactly when he wrote it, but I think he probably wrote it when he was king, uh, just my own uh, belief. So if you want to look there with me uh, this morning, I'm using the NIV. Uh, so off verse one, he says, ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord, the glory to his name, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. <clears throat> Let me just stop right there. Uh, the word ascribe uh, means to attribute or to give glory or credit for. And so David is saying, ascribe to the Lord, O mighty ones, and understand who God is. In other words, um, he's calling our attention back to the creator, that he's the one who's, who's created. He's the one that's responsible for everything that we see. Um, so let's go on and we'll come back to it. Verse three, the voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. Shiron, like, like a wild young wild ox. <clears throat> the voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The voice of the Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forest bare. In his temple, all cry glory. The Lord is enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. So there's a lot going on here. <clears throat> and David is talking about several different uh, places and specific things. Um, and the picture that, that I get from this is that he, he starts off and he's, he's saying, we need to ascribe to the Lord the, the authority and the power that is his. Um, they lived in a time with the people groups around them, the Philistines and the Amorites, all these different people groups <clears throat> that had worshipped other gods. Baal was one of the big ones, and Baal was considered the god that was over weather. And so if they were in a drought or anything else, they would do sacrifices to Baal. And so David is um, talking to the people of Israel, and he's saying to them, listen, we need to keep our focus right and understand that, that our God, Jehovah, is God. He's the one that has the power and the ability to bring about change and to, to move mountains if necessary. So he's talking about ascribe to the Lord his position as creator and one who is ultimately in charge. And then he says the voice of the Lord uh, is over the waters. The glory of God thunders. Right? So over the one, you know, the, the sea, the power of the sea, that was something that that those people, because they didn't understand things the way we do, right? So they would ascribe things to different gods. And they had all these different gods that they would pray to in different situations and seasons. And then he says, he thunders over the mighty waters. God is authority over the power of the sea. Um, the voice of the Lord is powerful, <clears throat> majestic. He breaks the cedars of Lebanon. Lebanon was known for its cedar forest. Um, we hear it all through scripture. Um, David uh, did a deal with them to get cedar for the building of his palace and ultimately the temple of the Lord. And he says that the voice of the Lord is strong enough to break those cedars, you know. Uh, and, and so he's using things that they were familiar with. He's powerful or more powerful than the desert. So David is kind of defining who God is. And, and picture, and then he talks about thunder, you know. And thunder was something that would always freak him out, right? Because that was the gods were upset or the gods were doing something. And the Lord is the one who ultimately is over thunder. Now, how does all this apply to us? Well, for us, we don't have other gods that we we worship. I hope not, you know, Baal or Asherah or whatever else. Uh, we we look at things from a different perspective. Our, our God, a lot of times, is science. And, and we, we have a lot of people that think that science and Christianity are opposed, like two ends of a magnet that you can't push together. 
I don't see that at all. I think science and, and biblical understanding, biblical truth, um, go hand in hand as long as you understand creation. So um, it's kind of a cool thing. So as we grow and learn, the thing is, is that we don't want to leave God out of the equation. So even now with this whole coronavirus, we want, we want to know the studies. We want to know the science of it. We want to understand the medical issues that are taking place. But, but we also need to understand that God's bigger than all this, right? That he has the authority over it. And if we trust him, he's going to bring us through. And so David is trying to establish for the people the power of their God, Jehovah, that they have something that others don't. And then he ends it with these last couple of verses. It says, the Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord is enthroned as king forever. The Lord gives strength to his people. And the Lord blesses his people in peace. It's kind of like the calm after the storm. You can have this crazy storm and afterward everything's just kind of calm. And there might even been destruction because of the storm. But, but God brings calm to his people. He's going to bring us through. And however this thing plays out, God's going to be with us. So ascribe to him his position in your life. And, and understand that he is the ultimate authority. We study, we want to grow and learn everything we can, but we know who God is and we know who we are because we are part of his family. All right, have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.